What's up everybody, Baker here with a tutorial RGB switch or not switch, Twitch homemade plugin. Feeling pretty good today. No one's home. Feel like doing a tutorial. That's cool. Um so let's get right into it. So like here's kinda what this plugin will do. Kinda like um just getting that RGB Twitch, you know, that you've probably all seen. Um it is keyframable. Um, it's not doesn't have to be constant. You can also do transitions like this. I think it's pretty cool. So this is basically like a substitute for the video copilot twitch. If you uh, don't have that or just don't feel like you know illegally downloading it or anything, uh, kind of messed around and kind of made it. For you guys, and uh, so I'm almost skeptical, skeptical that I didn't really make a plugin. Well, you know, uh, let's take a look. You know, I got all all this code I made. You know, def definitely not mine or anything. Yeah, look, like triple if statements, if statement within an if statement. Um, I'll kind of talk about that the second half of the tutorial, just so I don't get you guys lost. Um, right now I'm just gonna go over how to use it real quick, okay? Alright, so let's just take a clip. Uh, I think I just used this one. This is, uh, just gonna be like how to basically just use it. So go ahead and type in RGB split twitch something. I don't know what to call it. So, and uh, it goes away. So that's pretty cool. Go ahead and duplicate your quit clip twice top layer, go down here, and go to set red to source one, set to red. And then the middle layer, go to this one and go to green. And bottom layer, the bottom one to blue. And highlight all these and set them to screen. So what is going on here is basically split the three layers into red, green, and blue, and then the positions are just getting wiggled, and then that's how you get the little splitting in between. Now, I made this so that you can change the amount, so each layer has their separate amount, so to link them together, here's what you can do. Push E, bring down the amount, push E, bring down the amount, push E, bring down the amount, and let's make some room here. Go ahead and click on the bottom slider, alt, click on the stopwatch, and then pick whip to the top slider. Do that for the middle layer, alt click, and pick whip to the top. So what that does is, if we change this top slider value, these will follow as well. So let's go ahead and collapse all these, and take a quick look. Top layer, and just kind of mess with the slider. See, they're all going to be shifting a lot. So I like 20, it's it's pretty subtle. Um, horizontal and vertical strength. So that basically uh, you can make them independent. So like if I turn the horizontal down to zero and do that for the other layers too. And you can also link these together if you want, doesn't matter. But if we look through this, now they're only going up and down. And vice versa, you can switch it around Maybe you want just a little bit of horizontal, maybe like 15%, 15% and 15%. So there's going to be a very tiny bit X um, offset and then a whole bunch of Y. So that's pretty cool. And uh, push U, you can go into my expressions, and I give you kind of a little bit of tips. Um, talk about like how to change the speed if it's like a little too fast for the shaking. I tell you what to do. Um, pretty, pretty interesting. And um, that's basically it. You can uh, keyframe the amount. So like, push keyframe, move forward, set it back down to zero. Maybe go forward. Let's see here, zero, and then have like a really quick spike. Oh, like 50. 
move forward and back down to zero or something. So what that's going to do is, let's take a look. So it's shaking, it turns off, and then there's a quick jump. So, yeah, to make this a little bit more, more like, non-constant, so if we just have it at like 30, it's just always going to be shaking, right? Well, we can alt-click on that and type in wiggle, parentheses, 8, comma, let's say 30. So what that does is it takes the current value, which is 30, that's what we typed in, and it's going to kind of choose random numbers within 30, you know, points or whatever. So it's going to go from 60 to 0 randomly uh, every eighth of a second. And what that looks like is kind of like this. So it's a tiny bit more random. Um, it's all right. So the only downside about this plugin is you can't use it on an adjustment layer. And um, so for the transition, it's a little bit different. So what you do is you have a composition with two clips, right? And let's say this one's cut to here and this one's cut to here. And so we got this jump in between, right? So what we got to do is we need to pre-compose this. So layer pre-compose. Now if you're in a, if you're in a um, montage and you have a whole bunch of clips highlighting them all and pre-composing and it's kind of pooey, right? Yeah. So what you do is the other way um, you find this comp in your project window take this and drag it into the new comp button and that pre-composes it for you. So let's go ahead and find that jump or was it around here, so it's going to be right around here. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Drag on your Twitch and duplicate it two times. Top layer set off to red, middle layer off to green, and bottom layer, whoa, don't double click on it. Bottom layer off to blue. And um, yeah, again we're going to have to uh, Link up the amounts. So let me do that really quick. So I'll click on the bottom, pick whip to the top. I'll click on this one. I'll uh, pick whip to the top. Okay. So, oh, set all these to screen as well. So go to the point right when it transitions. Uh, come on, where is it? Come on, buddy. I passed it. Right around there. Okay, close enough. We'll take the amount and set a keyframe. And then let's go back about 10 frames. So if we're at 820, we'll go to 810. And set a keyframe down to 0. And 820, 10 seconds, so 830, which would be 9 seconds. Set this down to 0. <clears throat> so, if I preview this, we'll see a little bit of a transition, except our amount is very weak. So, let's go ahead and change that middle keyframe. Let's boost this up really high to like 500. And um, it's pretty sharp, so what we can actually do is go in here and turn on the motion blur for all three switches or layers and turn on the comp motion blur Look at that because these layers are actually moving so the motion blur for the layers will register so let's take a look Aww. a little bit of crazy twitch going on look at that it's so rainbow and colorful and stuff and uh, yeah, you can make it like, you can change the strength. So if you want the transition to only be up and down, like I had it before, just change horizontal to zero and keep vertical at 100. All right, so that's pretty much it. 
Um, let me kind of just go over like how this works if you're interested. If not, you can go ahead and close the video. Make sure to like it though, because I worked two to three hours on this to really make it work, because I had a lot of trouble with this. So, kind of let's look in the inner workings here. So, basically, what I did is you make a whole bunch of sliders, pretty much anything that you need to like change. So, I made an uh, amount slider. The X wiggle and the Y wiggle is just a a wiggle expression that uses your amount slider and it outputs a value that it needs to be offset so I use transform and change the position and I basically just link it up to that X and Y wiggle and that's how much it moves and that took a really long time because there's a lot of crazy things with wiggle and uh, it, it wasn't that fun trying to figure it out. Now, the motion tile, if you know what that does, this, basically, let me, give me one second. Delete these two layers. And let me turn off this uh, set channel. So we just have this layer, right? Now, what motion tile does is it basically repeats itself. So without it, it would look like this. There's black bars, and it's just like the layer moving around. Now, motion tile, instead of just putting a value like 150% like constantly, that's going to render out 150% constantly when the Twitch isn't even on. And that's extra rendering, because it still renders. Oh, it still needs to process that. So I had to figure out how to make it so... Let's see when it moves, so the motion tile will only render out what's needed. See that? It's only going to render out to there. Now, if we go into like another side, maybe over here, see we got the um, reflection edges. It's only rendering out just to there. So this will increase your rendering time, or actually, it would just maximize it um, compared to just adding in a value like whatever see the output right now is only a hundred percent so that's just like normal and then when it's twitching 181 118 so I put a lot of effort into this you guys um, if you could uh, like this video so I know you guys appreciate this also if you guys are familiar with my synchronizer plugin at all um, give me some feedback on that if like anything you want me to add um, what I'm working on right now, or what I have right now, just delete these. Synchronizer V3. What I have is it, it like already has the scale linked up for you guys, so you don't have to do any crazy pick whipping or um, expressions yourself. It's all built in already. See, there's that thumping that everyone uses. So I have that built in. I have another kind of thumping, it's called bulge. It's a little bit different, but still kind of same effect. And I also got brightness and contrast. And uh, you have to fix the values for that. But is there anything else you guys want me to try to add to this plugin so it's all bundled up into one simple thing? Please let me know. Um, go ahead and download this plugin, the RGB Twitch. And um, have fun, you guys. That's about it. Um, here are a couple other tutorials. Please check them out. I think they are pretty cool. Um, yeah. Peace, you guys.